Hello lovelies and uh, happy summer. Hopefully you have slightly relaxed now from the, the, the trauma that was last academic year. Now we have had a big sign from the government that exams are happening next year and I'm going to take you through all of the changes, the four big changes for GCSE and for A level exams. So I'm sure lots of you are really worried about the stuff you've missed, any potential school closures that are going to be coming up in the next academic year, and what sort of things that you can do to help with this, to help catch up everything and make sure you don't miss anything else. Now the most important thing that you can do, and I know this is going to be really, really hard, is to not stress about things too much. because. This can really, really have a negative impact on how well you actually do in your exam. So please try not to worry about it. Please try and believe that I, the people at home and the people at school are doing their very, very best to make things as easy for you as possible. Now, if you are watching this now in the summer, it means you are actually interested in your exams next year in 2022. So to reward that, people that sign up to my courses before for the start of the next school year can get 50% off the courses to reward you for being interested now. People that sign up the day before the exams have to pay full price, which, you know, courses start from £5. It's not actually a huge amount, but it does allow me to keep making loads and loads of free videos for you. Now, the free videos are going to be an important part of the stuff I can do to help you because one of the big changes that's being talked about and it is just talked about at the moment because Ofqual have released a big consultation and you've got until the 1st of August to respond to this so you do get the chance to have your say in the changes that are being made to next year's exams. Do they go too far? Do they not go far enough? Should something else be done instead? Now, one of the changes that is being talked about, one of the changes that's going to be made for next year, is removing the requirement for you to need to do the required practicals. Now, this is at GCSE and at A level for science. Yep, we are starting with science, which means you can either watch your teacher demo a practical or you can watch a video of the practical, one of my videos, for example. So there are lots of um, ways that I can support you with this, the videos and the workbooks, but not actually doing the practicals anymore is going to save time when you're in school, but it does kind of remove part of the fun bit from the GCSE. Now, one of the changes that is being talked about for GCSE and A-level is telling you what is gonna be on the exam. Now, they haven't told us exactly how much they're going to tell us. For example, for one of the English exams, it could be um, you're going to have a question on Act 2, Scene 4, but you don't know exactly what theme that question's going to be about. So you just knew that you don't have to bother with Act 1, revising anything on that. Or it could be for maths that we know that question one is going to be on algebra, but we don't know exactly what form of algebra it's going to be. So they're going to tell us what's on the exam but until we know exactly how much they're going to tell us that's not actually a very useful bit of information it will however narrow down how much revision you have to do for some subjects now i say for some subjects because for science and english large parts of the curriculum isn't examined every year you will generally get a question on a specific topic for english or a specific section or theme of a book or play and with science, generally about 60 to 75% of the content is actually examined. Some stuff is always just left out. However, for maths, generally, the whole curriculum is examined every single year. So while telling you what's going to be on the exam is helpful for some subjects, it's not necessarily very helpful for other subjects. And at A level, while they are going to tell you what's going to be on paper one, what's going to be on paper two, what's going to be on paper three, Generally at A-level, everything gets examined. I know for the sciences and for maths, that's definitely true. So telling you what's going to be on what paper is kind of useful for your revision, um, but they might not even go that far. 
until we actually see what they're going to tell us we don't know exactly what it is now one of the other things that they are talking about the third proposal that they are talking about is providing support materials for GCSE maths GCSE physics and the physics part of GCSE combined science now the support materials are likely to be equation sheets like this equation sheet but not as pretty now the equation sheets means you don't have to learn that chunk of content so this is really really useful but you're still going to have to be familiar with using the equation sheets working out which equation you actually need to pick out to use and it is unlikely they're going to have the units on the equation sheet so you still need to use your units for everything now this is a change that's only been made for GCSE not for A level these equation sheets you can get them for free when you sign up to our mailing list, it's one of the free downloads, signing up to our mailing list. Um, schools, I will send schools thousands of them for free. Or if you want to pay for the cost of postage, which isn't very much, then you can get those from my website as well. Now the fourth and the last change that is being talked about for exams next year is reducing the amount of content in some subjects. So we're talking about GCSE English Literature, we're talking about GCSE History and we're talking about GCSE Geography. Now this is likely to be basically the same if not very very similar to what was talked about for last year. So for English, basically removing one of the texts that you have to study. Um, this is probably going to be down to school choice, which texts you basically haven't done yet. So whichever one they left until year 11 or the end of year 11, basically you won't do that. You'll just concentrate on the ones that you did before. For history, it's removing one of the units. So, you know, doing three out of the four units, you won't have to answer all of the questions on the exam. And for geography, is looking like we are losing field work so a little bit of a combination of um you know skipping a whole chunk of content and then a combination with kind of like what they're doing for science we don't have to do practical work but this is a massive shame because geography field trips are really good fun um the less said about my fun on geography field trips definitely the better um but it does kind of like feel that i'm removing all the fun bits from the practical subjects so the field trips and the practical work so those are the four proposals that are uh, off-color consultation consultating consulting on at the moment and there'll be a link in the description down below where you can click in and give your opinion on what you think um off call should actually do do they go far enough in their suggestions for next year's exams um we still don't know what school is going to look like in september so do they need to put something else in place um do they need to have a guarantee that exams will definitely happen um is that something you would like to see this is your opportunity to leave a comment down below to discuss it with other people and actually let Ofqual know what you think as well um so summer holidays preparing for uh next year you can do a little bit of work if you want to. If you're getting ready for A-levels, definitely suggest that you do some work. Um, but otherwise, just try and relax. Um, I will be working for you, obviously, getting stuff ready for next year for you. Um, so, good luck, guys.